Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. Listen, many times, it's not that we can't get out of the mud, it's that we won't get out of the mud. Sometimes we're like that pig, you know, gets out and gets all shined up. As soon as you let the pig go, he goes right back to the mud. He likes, you know, a lot of times we like to go right back to our misery. And sometimes we like to pull others back into it. How many of you know uh, misery loves company, huh? Maybe you're just looking for some sympathy or some attention. So you want others to come and take a mud bath together, huh? Listen, saints of God, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, careful, our misery will become our identity. How many of you know somebody? Nobody in here. I know it's nobody in here. But as soon as their name is mentioned to you, you think, oh, you mean that one that's always nasty, that's always negative, that never has anything, because that became a part of, of their identity. In John chapter 5, many of you know this story. There was a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. Jesus walks up to him. It sounds like a crazy question. Do you want to be healed? You would think the obvious answer would be please. But that wasn't his answer. His answer, well, I don't have anybody to help me. I believe that man, that became his identity being paralyzed. And there are far too many Christians, there are far too many saints of God that have been paralyzed at the pool waiting for somebody to help them into the pool when Jesus is standing right there saying, get up, take your mat and walk. If the devil can keep you bound up in unforgiveness or that root of bitterness, if he can keep that alive in you, you will never live in the abundant life that Jesus has provided for you. If you're stuck in the mud of the past, you're constantly beating yourself up. You need to stop looking in the past. You can't drive forward looking in the rearview mirror. If you try that, it's an imminent crash. The devil wants you to hold on to that bitterness, that anger, that unforgiveness, the disappointments in your life, the failures, the feeling of rejection. Let me share just a quick testimony with you. When I was first saved, as many of you know, I was, when I got saved, I got delivered immediately. I mean, I was just set on fire for the Lord, and I just became a zealot. And everywhere I went, I preached. You know, I was thrown out of bars and the whole bit. I've told that story before. But one morning, sitting across from my mother, I was hammering her with the gospel. So she regurgitated on me. And she said these words to me. You were a mistake. Y'all with me? A deep cut. Cut deep. I immediately shut my mouth. I was stunned that my mother would say that to me. Never heard those words before. I got up. I went downstairs where we had a little... I had a little recording studio and I had an old piano and there was a piano bench. I could remember this like yesterday. And I fell to my knees. Did you ever get to that point where you're so hurt? You just drain. And I just drained. And I began to weep. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, you're not a mistake. He brought Jeremiah 1 and 5 to me. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Come on, I'm trying to talk to somebody here this morning. 
Psalms 139, throw that up there, Caleb. Watch this. It says, for you, God, created my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. If you're here today and know that God has created you in his image, come on, somebody, give him a praise in the house of the Lord. So let me wrap this up. The devil wants nothing more to do than for us to hold on to our past sins. But I'm here to tell somebody, I don't care if you've committed murder, rape, I don't care how many abortions you had. I don't care what kind of sexual escapades that you were engaged in. I don't care if your last name is Hitler, Hussein, or Putin. All right? I think I covered all the bases. I think you got the picture. Doesn't matter because there's enough grace at the foot of the cross. There's enough mercy at the foot of the cross. There's enough love for God so loved the world. There's enough love to wash my sins away. If I confess my sin. He's faithful and just to forgive me my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I wish somebody would thank God if you've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb in this house today. to proclaim the gospel.